The special representative of the United Nations Secretary General for Central Africa was guest at the Unity Palace today. Francois Lutznifal harped a while on the ongoing coronavirus care in Cameroon before touching on other areas of interest in the United Nations with, between the United Nations and Cameroon in other regions. As we build up to the lackluster and not too exuberant commemoration of the 48th edition of the National Day of Cameroon, owing to the COVID virus pandemic, the 7.30 news tonight zooms in on the national flag. That's some state emblems deserving respect. PWD, Social Club of Pamenda, popularly known as the Bakwa Boys, are currently savoring their newfound glory as the 2019-2020 League One Championship of Cameroon and are already dreaming of making a big start at the CAF competition that they will be participating in for the very first time. And those are our lead stories. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Ben Meno Pufong and this is the 730 News. We take you straight to the Unity Palace as health issues continue to dominate global arena, especially with the ravaging consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. The special representative of the United Nations Secretary General for Central Africa was at the Unity Palace this afternoon for an appraisal of the situation in the sub-region with the Cameroonian leader, Paul Beer. Health issues aside, Mr. Francois Luznifal and Paul Bia exchanged a wide, on a wide range of issues, including security and integration in the sub-region. Ashu Nienti is at the Unity Palace. This Wednesday, 13 May 2020, is another day of routine business here at the Unity Palace with the anti-COVID-19 gear in place. Even among the Guard of Honor, President Paul Bia in his sovereign duties receives this diplomat, Francois Luceni Fall, the special representative of the United Nations Secretary General and head of the United Nations Office in Central Africa with residence in Libreville. He will be ushered into the presence of the head of state by the chief of state protocol, Simon Pierre Bikele. For close to one hour, both President Paul Bia, who has often drummed Cameroon's status as a people of the United Nations and a representative of the United Nations Secretary General, go over a wide range of issues, including health and security. We had the opportunity to discuss uh, the security matter in the sub-region, integration, the caste problem, and also we discuss uh, uh, the pandemic uh, issue of uh, um, COVID-19 and all the measures already taken by the government. I give the support of uh, the UN, the United Nations, the Secretary General, to continue to support to Cameroon to fight this pandemic. As it has been customary with audiences at the Parties lately, the overall situation in the Northwest and Southwest regions didn't escape their attention. The UN diplomat gets President Paul Bia's informed view on the goings on in that part of this country. And also we discuss the issue, internal issue of Cameroon in Northwest and uh, Southwest. And uh, I met the president and then uh, I'm very encouraged by his disponibility to continue to, to continue to work for the stability and the unity of the country, this country. The United Nations top official in Central Africa leaves the Unity Palace comforted in their understanding that Paul Bia's wisdom will work Cameroon into a united and stable country. The presidential plan for the reconstruction of the northwest and southwest regions has integrated a series of development projects worth 36.3 billion CFA francs to be executed between May 2020 and April 2021 in the two regions. The work plan for the first years were disclosed today during the first steering committee meeting of the plan, which held at the auditorium of the Prime Minister's office. The session was co-presided by the Minister Director of Cabinet at the Prime Minister's office, Balungeli Confiance Ebune. Star building correspondent, Sisako Tamko reports.
A wide scope of operation indeed for members of the steering committee as a first annual plan for the reconstruction and development of the Northwest and Southwest regions was unveiled. Validating the annual work plan on the corresponding budget estimated at 36 billion 321 million is a trigger for the reconstruction of the affected regions in three core areas, namely social cohesion, infrastructure development and economic revival. We shall lay particular emphasis on accompanying the victims of the crisis, uh, regain access to their essential documents which they lost because of the crisis. We shall start the reconstruction rehabilitation of schools, health centers, water points, roads, bridges, and what have you. The reconstruction effort, which comes to complement the humanitarian support, is perceived by many as a pathway to a sustainable development which could only be realized on an enabling environment. Fears are presented with fears of an enabling environment, that if we are not uh, very sure of a clear enabling environment, we might not be able to achieve the required goals of reconstruction because we've realized that uh, our youths have been deconstructed with different ideologies and mentalities that we need to deconstruct and then reconstruct them as individuals in order to be able to have an enabling environment. The entire process requires green community trust and understanding, building conflict management skills, strengthening community networks and bottom link citizen participation. The role of the church would be to preach a lot on peace and justice so that the people can be able to see this reconstruction as uh, part of the justice that is being rendered to them and that will create the enabling atmosphere for peace to return. In response to the overwhelming housing needs of communities, the United Nations Development Programme, which is the implementing agency, is providing housing kits to at least 50% of the households under the philosophy of a Build Back Better principle. Steering Committee Chairperson Minister Balinguli Confiance Bune called for a constructive spirit and high sense of responsibility. Prime Minister John Gute heads the presidential plan for the reconstruction of the Northwest and Southwest regions now in its operational phase. As the celebration of Cameroon's uh, National Day approaches, focus tonight is drawn to the respect for national symbols. The use of the national flag, the most solemn of these symbols, is defined by the flag protocol of September 16, 1976. Protocols that Cameroonians breach now and then by hoisting the flag in the wrong way, in the wrong place, or by desecrating it altogether. These acts have civil and criminal consequences attached, as you tell us, Beatrice Lossamba. It took the flag makers time and energy. Generation after generation invested intellect to design a national flag for Cameroon from the time of the German colonization to independence to reunification and unification. The current national flag adopted in 1975 embodies a whole lot of values the nation stands for. And as a result of these values dear to the heart of the nation, the three equal vertical bands of green, red, and yellow with a yellow five-pointed star in the center commands respect in ways defined by the flag protocol of September 16, 1976. It's to use it before every public building, to use it during uh, public ceremonies, to use it uh, on the flag of the President of the Republic in Yaoundé. Consciously or unconsciously, the country's flag has been disregarded. What we should not do with the flag is to, to cover furniture. We should not sit on the flag. We should not even wear the flag. We should not uh, burn it in public, knowing that a flag can be burned when it is torn and very far from the public. He who dishonors the national flag faces the law. According uh, to the uh, military justice code, you can uh, undergo uh, from three months 
to uh, three years uh, prison uh, sentence. And when it concerns a soldier, he can undergo as from six months to five years sentence if he uh, refuses or denies, declines honoring the flag in public. And in more serious cases, 20 years in jail or a life sentence. And flag makers keep devising new ways of protecting the national symbols. And so Cameroonians will, in a week's time from now, celebrate their national day. Although the march past and parade that usually characterizes the day will not be staged due to the coronavirus threat, the day offers an opportunity for reflections on how the country's unity is, is being sampled today. One of the areas that attracts attention is Cameroon's symbols, which, is, which should be respected as a sign of patriotism and national ego. Moki Edwin Kinzaka presents some of the national emblems that are deserving of respect. Patriotic Cameroonians feel nostalgic when they hear this call to rally, especially when the indomitable lions are staging strategic outings. It is the national anthem of the Republic of Cameroon, one of its official symbols. Like other emblems, it represents the cultural heritage, natural treasures, and the history of the people. Other emblems that identify Cameroon everywhere in the world are its flag, the green, red, and yellow, with a star in the middle, a symbol of national unity, the seal of institutions, official languages, the country's motto, which is peace, work, fatherland, the name, the Republic of Cameroon, seal and armories, and its leader, the presence of the Republic, symbols should be respected as a sign of patriotism and love for fatherland, as a sign of respect for state authority and an indication of readiness to defend one's country and proof of true citizenship. It is one of the very catchy regalias from the west region of Cameroon and other grass field regions of the country. They call it the Ndop, which, is, which to the people of this cultural extraction, they say they wear it as a symbol of power, authority and nobility, and in most cases, only by the initiated people. Blue, white and black are its distinctive colors, generally produced by esoteric fabricants who give the outfit all its grandeur, even as textile, textile companies are now coming up with pale copies that proliferate the entire nation. Joy Tata reports on the joy of and excitement of adorning this unique traditional outfit from the grass fields. A jewel from the West Region of Cameroon, the Ndopwe. Indigenes of the West Region found the niche from the Northwest Region of Cameroon where the name Dop originates. Pretty rare to find given its unique and important status. First, because it's head and met. Ndop is only for kings, prince, for the royal courses. Now, we're not only aristocrat, we're also citizen. Everybody is allowed to put what he wants if he can. Vendors of the traditional regalia reveal two types exist. This is handmade by the Bamileke and this is produced by the textile company. Many Cameroonian lovers on the job today go in for the textile industry's version given its cheaper costs. Some carve out accessories using the fabric. My customers love the Ndop attire, so they buy even though from different regions. I am from the north region, but I put this on, same as many Bamilekes wear our own attire. It is an attire through which unity is portrayed. Fashion designers are using this window to weave out traditional regalias made up of the Ndop and other local brands. Especially Ndop wearing 
it's reflecting Cameroonian in each area you are. And concerning that dressing, Cameroonian, all Cameroonian uh, take care to be in their culture. The dual colorway is to the appointer to the fact that being a Cameroonian like Pa Umaru is same as mingling with other cultures for living together is best. And as we continue to dig out evidence of national integration in the country, we are taken aback by the picture of the southwest region where non-natives are males, quarterheads, and even traditional rulers. Guy Roger Nana now picks up this remarkable story of national integration coming from the southwest region. The mayor of Tombel in the southwest region, Rose Ingasa, currently in her second mandate, originates from the west region of Cameroon. Meanwhile, the Tiko municipality in the southwest region of Cameroon equally has in its annals memories of late Honorable Beto, one time member of parliament for Tiko. He was not an indigenous of the locality. In, in areas where you have mayors who are not indigenous of, of the, the area, it means those mayors were not appointed, they were elected, which means that they had the support of the population. Inhabitants of the southwest region are, however, of the opinion that times have changed and the choice of leadership should not be influenced by a person's origin. Those days when they, you, we, we used to think that only people from a certain area should be rule of or govern the other area, those days are, are gone. We've had uh, some very, very successful mayors who, who were not indigenous of uh, the area. You can think of, uh, at, at one time, uh, Paul Bamiliki did a fantastic job. And, uh, and which municipality was that? Kiko. The common interest of the country as a whole should always be the driving force. Our 1996 constitution is crystal clear on the fact that, as a Cameroonian, one can live and work in any part of the national territory. It's all about um, uh, equity and equality, to render equitable and equal services to Cameroonians, not to a particular community. Living together, many say, is a possibility that will be better enforced in the midst of equity without any influence by one's origin. And in the build-up to this year's National Day, which comes up on May 20, we kickstart a series on venues that epitomize unity in Douala, the nation's economic capital. Our first stop is at the Kayueli Junction, a crossroad of business ventures known as a hub of commercial motorbike riders and other petty businesses. This junction is named after the first businessman to have settled here, Papa Keo, native of the West Region, uh, lent in his, to his famous roundabout after the, he died two years ago. Alphonse Abongwa tells us how he integrated the point at the point of becoming a symbol of national integration in the economic capital. Once upon a time, a man from the West region called Kayo Eli journeyed to Douala, settled in the Bali neighborhood of the Douala 2 subdivision built several business ventures, recruited many young persons, and changed the narrative of several stories that were already going wrong. He owned one of two loan existing provision stores that eventually became the reference point for anyone heading to the neighborhood. That was the birth of Karufu Kayo Eli. The name Karufu Kayo Eli dates to over 40 years back to honor the very first businessman who settled here and imposed himself as such. I've been here for almost 11 years. One day I asked my, my, my boss, why are they calling this Karufu Kayo Eli? He said to me, because of one of what is he, the guy was one of the chief. The patriarch who died in his 90s two years ago epitomized the very values of national unity to several generations. Karfukayo Eli is a meeting point for bike riders, small business holders, and persons coming from all parts of the country 
and social strata. We have persons from all ethnic groups. It's a social melange. There are Bamlikis, Bamuns, Bamwas, Nordist, and we all live here in harmony. And this too is a way of recognizing those like Kayo Eli, who promoted and consolidated the process of national unity in their own little way. We now try to take you over to the uh, emergency operations center where the monitoring on the ongoing corona scare in Cameroon is taking place. And our reporter posted out there is uh, Baldwin Sama, who is here with the re most recent update on how the situation has been evolving in the country over the last 24 hours. Baldwin, tell me, what is the latest from the center? Well, good evening, Ben Medopufong, and welcome to the Public Health Emergency Operations Center in Yaoundé this Wednesday evening, where I should say, as of today, we have 10 persons who have recovered from COVID-19 in the country. This information confirmed to us a while ago by officials of the Public Health Emergency Operations Center here in Yaoundé, who equally use the opportunity to tell us that uh, more and more persons have been tested positive, talking about the spread of the virus, and asked why we have had more cases so far, just one answer was made available because it has been noticed here that more and more Kamunyas have stopped respecting government outline measures to stop the spread of this virus. More and more Kamunyas have stopped wearing face masks. More and more Kamunyas have stopped respecting social distancing. And more Kamunyas have stopped disinfecting their hands or washing their hands with uh, clean water. So tonight, we have 10 persons who have recovered from COVID-19. And with our resource person, Dr. Eric Tanzi, we wish to look at the differences uh, talking about some of these symptoms of a potential carrier of uh, the COVID-19 virus. Good evening, doctor. Yeah, good evening, buddy. I wish to find out from you some of the differences talking about uh, uh, symptoms of a potential uh, carrier of uh, the uh, COVID-19 virus. What's the difference between a normal body temperature, a normal sneezing, normal coughing? What are some of these differences that Camunians need to know? Thank you very much, uh, Baudouin, for this important question. As we already noticed, a lot of panic, confusion uh, within the communities. Uh, like we've been saying before, you know, uh, we are in a season where you could have different body changes, different temperature changes, different conditions all around the country, but we shouldn't get confused with some of these signs and symptoms, uh, especially when you have headache, cold, cough, running nose or sore throat. All this can happen to each and every one of us at any time. But we must be very careful to interpret some of these signs and symptoms because having this does not mean you have been infected or you are COVID positive. It doesn't also mean you are not COVID positive. But the only thing that can separate us from this is only when you visit the competent health facility within your vicinity for a test that will be, com that will be done to confirm or to cancel this. So uh, the information to the population is that in respect of your body temperature, because for example, if you have high malaria, you may be able to go beyond a temperature of 37, 38, which can equally be produced by COVID-19 individual. But what we need to understand here is you need to stay our calm at all time. Don't panic. Don't stay away from hospital because we have other diseases, other infections that can raise your body temperature other than uh, COVID-19. And in this case, we encourage each and every one. There is no need to panic. You need to get to the health facility for control. Don't sit at home because of fear and you think that you are COVID infected because you are noticing one of the signs and symptoms. Simply call 1510 or you get to the nearest health facility within your community for information or you go to 
an isolation center or a treatment center or a diagnostic center in case of uh, COVID-19 to have yourself sure and confirm of this. And again, just to remind, if you go for the test and you're positive, I'm happy you've announced a series of persons who have recovered from here. Although we have recorded some deaths, but these deaths are but normal when there is complications. You know, in certain cases, or most of the cases, we've had persons who showed complicated cases, and that is why we recorded some deaths. But majority has recovered. That is what is important. So there should be no need for the population to be worried or afraid from going to health facility because they think it's COVID-19. COVID-19 is not equal to death, but simply we thank uh, the, the professionals, health professionals, for their competency and diagnosis and recovery. So there should be no fear. Get to a competent health facility and know your status and stay safe, protecting yourself and even those within your community. Thank you so much, Doctor, for always being available as a resource person on the 730 Newscast officials of the Public Health Emergency Operations Centre. I'll be using the opportunity to appreciate the key role played by some administrative authorities in the country in the ongoing fight against the spread of COVID-19. Most of them who have taken decisions that will go a long way to punish Cameroonians who will stop respecting government outlying measures, especially that which has to do with the wearing of face masks in public places. They cited the example of the senior divisional officer of the Fundi. And they equally call on Cameroonians who have been repatriated back home. All of them who are already home who took the oath at the airports to respect barrier measures and to respect confinement rules to ensure that they stay at home and together we are going to stop the spread of COVID-19. So Ben Menopoufong, the take-home message from here is that 10 Cameroonians have recovered from COVID-19 this Wednesday. Back to you. Thank you very much, Baldwin Samar, for all of those updates. And what we gather from there is that despite the improvement, there still seem to be some high degree of scare and fear among Cameroonians. Let's come back to the studio to say the government spokesperson and Minister of Communication, Rene Emmanuel Sadi, flanked by the Ministers of Finance and Public Health, have detailed 19 measures taken by the government to mitigate the impact of the COVID-19 on, on the country's economy. During a press briefing uh, that just ended in Yaoundé, the members of government stressed that the contribution of the national community to check the spread of the deadly monster is not an option, but an obligation. In the following except the minister brings out some salient issues as raised during the cabinet uh, during the press briefing with regard to leisure facilities such as drinking spots and restaurants for example the government is calling on the responsibility of promoters owners of rest and owners of restaurant managers to help enforce the recommended actions and barrier measures. The same applies to all sectors of activity where the involvement of everyone is required so that in the long run, the use of coercion remains the exception rather than the rule. It should be noted that COVID-19 is neither a shameful disease nor a curse. Given that it is a disease that spares no one and which attacks both the young and the old, one cannot look at, look at it, consider or treat COVID-19 patients as plague victims. In short, we are faced with a challenge whose scale and seriousness are measured in terms of its spatial coverage and the worldwide mobilization it then generates. In order to address this challenge that concerns us, the contribution of each member of the national community to the eradication of COVID-19 is not an option, but an obligation whose strict observance is both a moral and a civic requirement. And despite all the reassurances from the cabinet ministers and health experts, 
more and more people are getting scared of being infected with the coronavirus, a fear that has physic, uh, in, it led to a, an immediate uh, stigmatization of the disease. That is why it is very common today to find people unnecessarily jittery because someone coughed or sneezed around them. Uh, worse still is the treatment usually given to recovered coronavirus patients with uh, who begins his daily affairs after all. Yoti Kalili Songe paints a picture of how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected people psychologically, making a cloud of stigma to loom around anywhere coronavirus is mentioned. Given the current context, having a common cold is no longer a normal ailment for some people. The first reaction will be, hey, my heart will begin to beat. The reaction is like the person had the disease. Even when they sneeze, it's a sickness that makes one afraid. It's only a flu. We have some period of the years, during the years, that we have flu. It's the same thing. And 97% of cases get recovered. That fear has equally pushed others to stay away from the hospital even when in dire need of medical attention. Two weeks ago, I was critically ill but didn't go to the hospital. I'm scared I can go there and get another illness. Don't stay at home. Don't be afraid because you can die for something different than coronavirus. Those who have been courageous enough to get themselves tested for the coronavirus also have a story to tell. I felt a little stigmatized the day I went for my COVID-19 test result by the woman who received me. I could tell that she felt the need to protect herself. If you are not psychologically strong, you could think it was the end. Branding negatively, people who have recovered from COVID-19 is unfortunately a reality. What is certain is, such individuals are not a threat to those around them. That person come back to work after 28 days, during which the doctor uh, see that there's no risk. Now, the person needs help, needs support for the surrounding. Contracting COVID-19 could be a scare. But surviving it through effective medical protocol is safe enough for everyone else in society. And you're watching the 7.30 News on the Cameroon Radio Television. We are beaming live from Yaoundé. Contrary to the information spread by certain media organizations about the possible devaluation of the CFA francs as a result of the COVID-19 impact on the exchange reserves, levels, the Bank of the Central African States, Bayak, has issued a press release disclaiming such allegations, stating that the foreign exchange reserves still stand above 5,000 billion CFA francs. Our reporter, Caroline Okianoma, read through the press release and picked out some details for the 7.30 News. In a press release signed on May 12, 2020, by the governor of the Bank of Central African States, Bayak, Abbas Mahmat Toli, the issue of a possible devaluation is nothing less than fake news. Looking at the figures in the press release, comparatively, Bayak's foreign exchange reserves stood at 5,348.8 billion CFE francs on May 10, 2020, compared to 4,113 billion CFE francs in 2019. So why the negative insinuations? Because it might not have enough currency to cover for importation. Mm -hmm. And the fact that that crisis has impacted the production of cocoa in the Noso. Understandably, the COVID-19 economic and social impact is well over. But the Semak region and Cameroon in particular have a catch-22. If Cameroon and the Central African region want to get out of this, they have to make sure uh, that uh, the CDC is bring back to the production level it was they were having before, same thing for the production of cocoa and banana and so on. Bayak will continue to monitor closely the impact of the health crisis on the economy and common currency, as well as manage all its currency instruments in order to maintain the cash flow requirements under the banking system, thereby ensuring the smooth conduct of monetary policy throughout the CEMAC zone. The new permanent 
the the let's rather move over to these other developments coming in first lady chantal bia has joined in the joy of parents who were delivered to triplets at the yaounde hospital center for research on endoscopic surgery and human reproductive research crasay by donating a complete basic needs to the 32 year old mother and her babies and Anga Kebe reports on the joy of these lucky mothers who will never stop thanking the First Lady for this land-breaking technology that is today making them happy mothers. It was a happy celebration at Krasse as Professor Jean Marie Cassia came out of his office to receive four suitcases from Mrs. Chantal Bia to the triplets and their mother delivered six days ago. The happy mother, 32 years old, named the babies after three holy saints, Raphael, Gabriel, and Michelle Acangelo, as a sign of recognition to the wonders of the living God. With a gift from God like this one, I have every reason to give thanks to the Almighty. The First Lady's special bouquet of fresh flowers was handed to the mother. This was followed by the suitcases. The three blue suitcases contained baby needs for the three boys, while the white suitcase was for the mother. The happy young mother posed for a souvenir photograph with her three plates. The joy of sharing with mothers at Crasse after a successful procreation through the in vitro fertilization technique is now a routine tradition for Mrs. Chantal Bia. With the COVID-19 pandemic, Professor Jean Marie Cassia and his team of experts are doing everything to respect the barrier measures prescribed by the government at the hospital. All the patients who are coming here to look at the, all the symptoms that the patient present at the entrance of the hospital, and we try to avoid uh, COVID-19 here. So far, the three boys and their mother are doing fine and very comfortable at Crasse. Belt will soon go home to enjoy family warmth. Let's talk sports now. Football fans in Bemenda have been rejoicing over the League One triumph of local football outfit, PWD Social Club, which was propelled as League One champions of the 2019-2020 Elite One Championship in Cameroon. Following that decision by the football governing body of Cameroon Feka Food, the club officials are already thinking about their participation in next year's CAF Championship League competition, and they say they are counting on support from their fan base at home and abroad. Winston Lebga reports from Bamenda. Blue and white colors fly and shine brightly in the firmament of Cameroon's Premier Football League. PWD Social Club of Bamenda have performed the feat of breaking the jinx that prevented any Northwest based club from winning the League One Championship. And it is their first ever title. It was a lot of joy, it was a lot of shouting and jubilation that all of us received that great news. And uh, it's a kind of feeling that one can hardly find words good enough to express. We are also looking at professionalizing the team and we are working towards sponsorship. We already had some, which was not at the level of the continent, but we are going to work towards that. We are going to work on commercializing our gadgets, our jerseys and other club uh, gadgets. Their city rivals, Young Sport Academy, have extended their best wishes to their Bakwa boys. I'm hoping that uh, the same support or uh, that team spirit that I saw within the team, it's going to be taken uh, to the level of the, the African Champions League. Apart from winning the league, PWD have got the top scorer, Leon Boyomu, who scored 11 goals. Next season promises to be more challenging with their title defense and the CAF Champions League campaign. And that's where we'll leave it for tonight. Let's do it all over again tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Good night.